Okay, uh, injury update. Uh, Schwartzy is day-to-day uh, -day with a knee strain, um, so we'll see how that goes over the next couple of days. Uh, but I think he'll be okay, uh, certainly, in the long term. Uh, and with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, they didn't say that, Tony, but yeah, I, you know, it happened right in front of me. So you're always nervous when it's no contact. But yeah, I didn't use those terms, but certainly uh, hopeful long term. Does that mean start of the season? He'll be ready for the season. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Day to day. Kevin, the first couple of practices you've had, what are you really looking for? Is it technique? Is it lining up properly? Yeah, I think you can get a lot done when you have shells on. Uh, when you have helmets on, you got to be real careful with, without the shells on. You have to be real careful about guys banging shoulders. So until you get those shells on, I think you got to be careful. But I think there's so much you can do from a technique standpoint in terms of proper pro posture, uh, proper hand placement, those type of things. You know, we, we've spent a lot of time, believe it or not, talking about how to do walkthroughs correctly. Uh, because I think you can lighten the physical load and, and accelerate the uh, mental load. And what we've tried to do in those walkthroughs is make sure that they're organized, that they're efficient, that the guys are taking their proper steps. So when you're not going, quote unquote, live, uh, you can really work on your alignment. You can work on your assignment, can still work your technique, but those techniques are really being driven home in their individual periods. Kevin, with David and Anthony, it, it, is there talk of going out and trying to find help, uh, replacement help at the receiver at this point, or is it still too early? Yeah, no, I'd say too early for that. Yeah, I think they're all doing a good job, Mary Kay. I think, you know, you mentioned Michael Woods. He was out for a good portion of the offseason program, so it's good to see him out there finally. We got to see him late in the offseason program. Uh, so he's somebody uh, that I'm excited to see what he has uh, over the course of these next few weeks. But I think all, all the young guys uh, are learning a lot. They're working very hard. Uh, you'll see today we'll have two seven on seven periods. So it will really be pass game um, heavy in, in that regard. So you'll see some competitive uh, periods with the offense and the defense. Kevin, we've gotten to know JOK as a player. We really don't know him as a person. How would you characterize him or describe him? Uh, Jeremiah is very thoughtful, uh, very intelligent, uh, very enthusiastic and energetic and about his teammates, about life, uh, deep thinker, um, enjoy being around him. Uh, I think he's uh, obviously has a bright future uh, in this league, but I think he's just a, a, a great person to, to spend uh, your days with. He acknowledged that maybe some of the mistakes he made last year turned into highlights. Would you be okay with him making a couple mm -hmm. of those again? As long as you make him 100 miles an hour, right? I, I think he's done a nice job. He's a player that plays at, sometimes at a frenetic pace. And I think with Coach Tarver, Coach Bloom, Woodsy, that we've tried to l make him understand that you can make plays within the framework of the defense. And then every once in a while, he'll make those extraordinary plays. He talked a lot about, he talked a lot about balance and life and football and everything. And I know that's something that's important to you. Is that something you guys have spent any time discussing? Jeremiah and I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. I mean, we've talked about his trips that he takes, and you know, he's, he has a lot of interest outside of football. That doesn't mean he doesn't love football. He loves football. He just loves some other things too, and that's okay. I think we, we can all do that. Uh, and he's, with his trips to Africa, those, those are really important to him. Those are really important to who he is. So I encourage him uh, in that regard. Will, will the players wear those caps in the joint practice? Yes. Uh, Kevin, when we talk to Joe Woods, he he had mentioned that about the youth movement and defense attack, when that just kind of mm -hmm. being part of the plan, developing some of those younger players, just um, the, the reps that they're going to get in camp and that, what are you looking from, from them and just, uh, you know, how, how valuable is that for the organization to, to really get those young guys on track? Yeah, we do have a young room there in the interior, but guys that we're excited about, you know, we talked about Jordan Elliott yesterday is a guy that I think is uh, going into his third year. Uh, it's, it really seems to be clicking for him uh, just with how he's handled this off season. So uh, there's a bunch of young guys that I'm excited to get some reps. Uh, it, it's all new, so they're going to make mistakes like we talked about earlier, but it's about not making the same mistake twice. Yeah, 
you know, it's a broken record when you're talking about Donovan. He, he makes plays when, when the ball comes his way. He's very dependable. Uh, I, I thought he had, I, I thought you could see him taking strides from his rookie year to his second year. I, I still think you see those strides. I think he's uh, works very hard on the physical aspect of this. He, he's diligent about his body. Um, and then, as we all know, he's very intelligent. So then it becomes a rapport between he and the quarterbacks. And I think they're doing a nice job in that regard as well. Now we've asked you about Chris Hubbard a few times, Kevin. Yeah. Um, he's had some, seems to me, like bad luck with injuries. Yeah. How's he doing? And, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know about the luck part, Jeff, but I tell you, he has a great attitude, an unbelievable attitude. He's somebody that when he's in the building, I mean, he he lifts everybody up. So uh, it, I, I know he's had some injuries that are disappointing to him and to us, but uh, it's not keeping him down. He's uh, he's coming back. He's he's ready to roll. I'm just curious how you personally uh, feel about how long it's taken for uh, this decision, particularly when you consider in the CBA that, you know, the post-game briefs aren't supposed to be uh, longer than uh, five pages, you know, although I heard discussion, I guess, to, to a degree. And then also, to what degree have you thought about, you know, just the preparation of that day uh, when it finally does come in terms of your conversations with Deshaun and just managing it as a head coach and organization? Yeah, I think, you've seen it with all, all of that you control the controllables and really as, as you know I, I control what goes on in this field so I'll continue to do that and all, all my discussions with Deshaun or any of the guys on the team will, will kind of keep internal uh, but it, it's important for me for all of us to make sure we control what we can control. Do you think it still warrants you know just kind of like a regardless of kind of telling what you're talking about but do you think that it warrants you know just kind of extra conversation and prep for that day in particular? Um, I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with how we're handling uh, that right now. At this point of your camp, would anything be different if you had a decision? Would, would you be practicing them too differently? Uh, I, I think the the, circ the, uh, the details would, would be important. You know, of, of whatever the decision is, the details uh, of potential length of absence would matter the most to, to us in terms of how we're putting our plan together. Kevin, we've heard from some of the defensive guys the last couple of days talking about this alpha dog thing that it sounds like just started. What do you, what do you know about that? They're being kind of secretive about it so far. Yeah, so I, well, I'm going to be secretive as well uh, because I don't want to get fined by those guys. But <laughs> I think what you're trying to do, Ashley, training camp's long and it is competitive, but you're always looking for ways to motivate the guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I think each position group does it in their own way, and, and certainly Joe with the unit is, is taking it, it to a unique place. You, you mentioned seven on sevens today, mm -hmm. um, and the ramp up is obviously different than it used to be. So, just like for you, how different is it? How different does it feel not being able to see guys go, you know, whatever, one on one or seven on and seven? Yeah, I, I think it's 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 interesting, Scott, because I go back to 2020. We didn't have preseason games, so we truly did have a ramp up. Um, so we're trying to, within the framework of the rules, think about the right way to do this, to get the football team ready to play, and to try to minimize injury as best you can. As we all know, injuries can happen uh, at, at a moment's notice, but what's the safe way to ramp up uh, to get ready to play football? You know, we got a Jacksonville game that's, that's coming around the corner, so you do have to accelerate that to a certain extent to get the team ready to play, but trying to be real smart about how you begin camp uh, because we know it's a long camp, it's a long season, got longer by a game last year. So taking all that into account uh, as we start to prepare for the season. Do you think it'll feel different tomorrow when the fans finally get there? It always does. It, it does. You know, the players love playing in front of the fans. Uh, and, and we're excited to have, you know, it'll be my first training camp where it's a true open camp and you have both sides of the, of the field with fans. I think it was a little bit more muted with just one side and, and that type of thing. So I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to that energy that it brings because it does ramp up the energy that the players then have. Kevin, we have heard several players here early on, and I, I realize it's early in camp, but talking about the vibe of the team, just how different it is from last year, I guess from your perspective, what have, what have you noticed, and, and I guess how would you define the, the difference in the this year. I think it's it's that's so hard for me to, to describe. Uh, whoever said it, that's probably that's their opinion. Um, 
I'm not real big on vibes. I mean, you, you, just, you, you haven't noticed anything different? I've noticed the guys are working. You know, the one thing I'd say, Daryl, is I think having a spring and having a nine-week program where the guys were in the building physically together and taking trips together, like, that's the type of thing that, can, that you can do to grow as a team that we weren't able to previously. But in terms of vibes, I mean, it's, what's today, July 28th, 9th? There you go. I don't know what day it is. Groundhog Day. But I don't think it's time yet to say that there's a different vibe. Do you think you uh, play it your starters in the preseason last year, or will you change anything about play time? Uh, I think we're going to have those type of discussions uh, the next couple weeks. Uh, we're always having those. I don't think any there's any hard, fast rules uh, in, in the NFL in terms of who plays who and, and how often you play. So it's really going to be dependent on this team and what we think this team needs to get ready. So we'll discuss that as it gets closer, but I would tell you that's something that you discuss every year, and, and every year stands on its own merit. Hey Kevin, when you say it's, you think it's too early right now to look for receiver help, how much of a factor is felt in the way you're doing the position? Yeah, well, I, I think you guys have heard me talk about uh, Demetric. He's a very versatile football player. He can He is a football player, first and foremost. Uh, there's an opportunity right now for him to get some receiver reps. We can bounce him back into that running back room at any point. And really, he's smart enough where he can do both within a given practice. Uh, so when you do have injuries at either position, he's a bonus player who can go on to either uh, either room, if you will. Would you give Kareem any more of those receiver reps? Yeah, I think Kareem uh, does a nice job outside of the backfield in a lot of things that we've done over the course of the last couple of years. So. That's definitely a role that he can play as well. Kevin, a question about the Jakeem Grant as a viable offensive option. You tried to do that with Nancy a couple years ago. Yeah. Right. So small. Yeah. Different, I'd say a different player uh, with, with Jakeem and JoJo. Uh, he's, he's an electric player, he's fast. Uh, so, certainly somebody that we uh, would love to use uh, as we get in the, the regular season. Do you think there are opportunities to feature Dearness a little bit more? You're talking about a guy who had almost three. 100 plus rushing yards last season. Now he's able to kind of get in there with Nick Chubb and those guys hurt relative to what he gave you when they were. Yeah, I think, you know, how I feel about Dearness, I think everybody knows he's a very, very, um, he's a great teammate, number one. And then when he gets in there, he produces. So he's definitely somebody that we want to touch the rock because good things happen when he does. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have a, a bunch of good options in that room, on the offense, and just in general. Uh, but Dearness, as you can imagine, he, he will do whatever we ask him to do.